Vince McMahon yesterday, I read a story that Vince McMahon is planning on coming back to the WWE and that he was quoted as saying he got bad advice, like legal advice, and he should have just waited and let the everything blow over and he would have been fine. But he's got he's got two new women trying to sue him for millions of dollars for sexual assault now. Um He's got a lot of issues, and I don't, I do not want to see him back in the WWE. <laughs> Neither. I, I would. Okay, there's another person. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to get into that topic, but that's what they're trying to do, and they're like best friends with Vince McMahon, uh, trying to say that they just got bad legal advice. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to oh, at that. You're not talking about. Say, not going to say another word. Not going to say the name. We don't say that word. Vince okay. McMahon didn't incite uh, insur- insurrection at the ca- state, you know, the United States Capitol <laughs> building. Um, and he didn't steal uh, uh, classified WWE documents from, from 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 Triple H and Shawn Michaels. He, he might try to infiltrate. <laughs> he can't steal his own documents. He's still the majority shareholder. He's still the owner. He just this whole thing is bizarre. And also, if I'm Triple H. And he decides to come back, like say Vince McMahon does really come back, and I'm Triple H. I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm done. I you. He already took cut his balls off with NXT when he changed it to NXT 2.0, changed the logo, got rid of all the wrestlers that Triple H brought in, and then Triple H just recently rehired Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, all these NXT wrestlers. Um, he's done all these things. He's brought back all these people that Vince got rid of he's giving pushes to people who like there's this guy named Gunther who's the intercontinental champion right now Vince was going to get rid of him before Vince departed well now Gunther is the IC champ and he's rumored to be wrestling Braun Strowman at Wrestlemania so like Gunther went from like with Vince calling the shots to like being on the bread line to like now he's going to be in a major match at Wrestlemania but Triple H, dude, if I'm Triple H, I'm done. I wouldn't yeah. even want to fuck around anymore. I'd just be like, I'm going to take... Triple H could just take his millions of dollars and start his own wrestling promotion. I don't know. Go, do go merge with uh, AEW, you know, with all that money. No, um, Vince has no business back in the business. Uh, things have gotten better. I would love if Triple H would uh, revert all the belts back before they were like, classless pieces of metal that nobody used any imagination on making worst designs ever they look like a five-year-old like wwe huge logo and some blue background or red background yeah and even the intercontinental title and the tag titles it's like take it back you know give us a little retro there um but no i think uh triple h needs to tell vince to come to the office he'll have a conversation with him you know and they'll shake hands and when vince turns around Mm -hmm. Michaels has been in the, you know, behind him the whole time, just waiting for Sweet Chin music, and just bam. Yeah, and then they should Press, pick yeah. his, and then they should pick his old, worthless ass up off the Titan Towers floor, and then after he got super kicked, then fucking pedigree him through a table too. He's and, gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna die. <laughs> and then X Box should, should come. He's been hiding on top of the ceiling in the corner like Spider Man. He he jumps down on the ground and gives him a fucking Bronco Buster. And then the coup de gras, uh, Rikishi, is waiting in the Titan Towers closet. And he pops out of the fucking doors and just... Vince has to join the Rikishi stink face club all over again. Better that. Better uh, he's been waiting in the bathroom. You know, he just got through using it, so... <laughs> oh, Rikishi? Yeah, stink face. <laughs> Oh man, he's gonna, he's gonna give him a shitty stick face. <laughs> Can you believe Vince is trying to fucking come back to the WWE? That's freaking ridiculous, man. I hope he doesn't because I think Triple H and Sean got NXT and WWE back on track. I'm so sick of Vince McMahon. He was fucking done 10 years ago. I know. I fucking agree. I mean, the dude. Can't even take, couldn't take a stunner. That was embarrassing. That was worse than when Hulk Hogan called the, uh, called it the Silver Dome or whatever. 
when they were like, in the Sky Dome. Or like he called three, the Sky Dome the Silver Dome, whatever it three was. Three times. He, no, they were at the Superdome. Superdome. <laughs> yeah, he called it the Silver Dome. <laughs> and then Stone Cold comes out and he's like, it's damn good to be in the Silver Dome. Oh, I loved it. <clears throat> I know that they were all in the ring uh, getting a kick. You know, like when, what you couldn't hear on the microphone, there was some fun shit going on in there. Uh, the Rock gave him shit for it. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking back to my favorite wrestling moments from the 90s. And one of, I think one of the best moments, two best moments from like WCW would be um, when Hulk Hogan turned back to red and yellow like the day after my birthday mm-hmm. in 99. And I know that it turned out like shit, but the night the Warrior came back, I had no idea that was coming. You know, there was no uh, websites you could go to, really. I mean, you could, but I didn't have access to it. And when the when, when the Warrior came out and he rambled for 30 minutes, I didn't even care at the time. Uh, you know, looking back at it, though, uh, you watch it on YouTube, you can see Eric Bischoff be like, you're taking up too much time. What are you doing in the ring? You know, uh, you can see him mouthing like, get him out of here. The problem with the warrior thing when he went to WCW is he was wearing that jacket, that duster yeah. and any, his music was not the music that we knew in WWF. So like you had to see him come out and be like, Oh, that shit, that's the warrior. You couldn't immediately know it was him. Like it was different. It was, well, it was, was still your, awesome though. My <clears throat> best WWF moment was switching over uh, to see mankind winning the world title. That was cool. I think I brought that up before. What are your what is your favorite WCW moment and WWF moment for this uh, slash track short that we're doing? My favorite WWF moment was when The Rock wrestled Triple H at Backlash, and I think it was Backlash 2000. And The Rock had been chasing the belt for the entire year, and Stone Cold came back from being hit by the car and uh, came out and helped The Rock beat all the McMahons down with a chair and the rock ended up finally winning the belt. That was huge. And another WWF moment was from around the exact same time. Chris Jericho wasn't even a main event guy at this time. He wrestled triple H and beat uh, triple H for the WWF title on raw. Uh, yeah. And apparently Earl Hebner had a fast count. So triple H like later on in the night forced Earl Hebner to like reverse the decision. So then triple H got to get the belt back. And I remember being a kid and just, I was fucking livid because <laughs> it was such a great moment to see Y2J win the belt. It was out of nowhere. It was on raw. He hit him with the, the lion tamer, you know, for off the ropes. It was really cool, man. It makes, and, me, makes me wonder if it was a fuck up and Vince like had to do quick thinking and have the whole quick count thing to give the belt back to, Triple H, like uh, Hunter, like uh, Paul Levesque didn't kick out when he was supposed to. You know, I, distracted. I I wish it was like that, but it, that was definitely a them. Work. It was a work because they were testing to see if he was wor- if Jericho was over enough to event maybe wow. have the belt at one point. Because later on, Jericho ended up beating The Rock and Stone Cold for both belts yep. and becoming the first ever. But he was a heel when he did that. That kind of sucked. Um, when he beat Triple H on Raw, he's a babyface. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, WCW moment? Huh. I would say it wasn't just one moment in particular. I remember when the NWO first formed in 96, and it seemed like every week they'd have a new member come out. And I just remember being so excited. It's like, who joined the NWO this week? Like, who the hell? And then I also remember doing the math in my head. And I'm like, okay, they've got Hogan, they've got Macho, they've got Nash, they've got Hall, they've got The Giant, they've got (laughs) Xbox. Yeah, it's like, who in the hell in the WCW is going to be able to to fight off these guys? I just remember not even, uh, even as like an 11-year-old, I knew it was pretty fucked odds for the WCW. It was all about money. Everybody knew that if they got the NWO, they got TV time. And merch, and probably merch money, right, from being in the faction. I don't know if Virgil did, you know, or, or hey, Virgil was. Hey, Virgil was probably on a per parent per appearance basis. They probably paid him. Like, there's no way that he had a contract. Honky Tonk <laughs> Man was in WCW around that time. He got paid per appearance. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He was Rick Rude status with DX. 
Like, that's how Rick Rude was able to show up on Raw and D- Nitro in the same night because he didn't even have a contract. He was just like, I'll show up, I'll do the town, and I can go do whatever the hell I want later. It was cool when he did that, but it was badass when Luger showed up on the first Nitro uh, while I, still on Raw. That was- I didn't get to watch the first Nitro because I – what was that, 95, 96? Yeah. Something. I wasn't even aware that uh, anything other than WCW Saturday Night was going on at that time. I was just – yeah. I don't even know that we had TNT. I think we did, but I was no, I, such a I've, raw guy. I've seen it in retrospect. I'm just saying that that's a that's a badass moment. I wasn't actually watching it yet, but yeah. Uh, Luger's hair, before we actually start the real show here in a second, Luger's hair, when he shows up to the Mall of America on the first Nitro, looked just like your hair looks now. <laughs> like, it's almost identical. Like, look at the length that you've got, full of body. Streamline, good. Somebody God. asked uh, what kind of highlights mm. I had. You can't really see it on here, mm-hmm. or maybe you can. They asked me what, uh, where I got my highlights done, and I said I don't have highlights. That is like streaks of gray hair underneath <laughs> the dark hair. It's like perfectly streaked. I've got yeah. so much white hair mixed in. It looks like I got blonde streaks in my hair. You're turning <laughs> you into, that? you're turning into freaking Herman's wife on the Munsters, dude. Oh, all uh, my roots are really? white. Like if, if I were to shave my head, I would look like Eric Bischoff from like uh, when he got his head shaved in WCW. Uh, I rem- I remember <laughs> also watching Nitro. Now that you're talking about Bischoff's hair color, he, from week to week, Bischoff, you could tell when he had recently dyed his hair. Yeah, because it's like, whoa, uh, Bischoff's looking like Elvis tonight, man. He's got <laughs> jet black hair, jet black goatee. And then, like, two or three weeks later, it would just be Christopher Lloyd White. Like, he had just invented the Flux Capacitor White. <laughs> what do you think? Should we start the real show here in a second? Yeah. Uh, I hope patrons <clears throat> enjoyed this. Uh, let's make this uh, Patreon exclusive thing, you know, that uh, you guys can catch a little pre-show conversation. Uh, we'll try to get this out to you every time we do a podcast. What do you think, Alex? Sound like I a think, plan? I think that's a great idea. Uh, and I also... I want to take a second just to personally thank Mikey, uh, Michael Clark. Yes, thank you, Michael. Because Michael uh, is extremely supportive and positive about everything that we do on this channel and everything that we do in our personal life. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but I was really sick with COVID about a month ago. And Mike was, you know, checking up on me and being being a great guy. And I want to thank him personally for that. So thank you, Michael. Yes, and thank you to all the patrons that have been here since the beginning. Uh, narrations are going to start coming out again more often. Uh, I really enjoyed putting out the chapters the other day. And uh, Landon Turner finished writing a fan novelization of Friday the 13th 5, A New Beginning. And I'm going to narrate that in 2023. That's going to be a lot of fun.